Clothing is a big part of human life, with long-standing cultural and societal significance. We have clothes for every occasion. Whatever it is, clothing certainly has it covered. The trouble is, we are producing and consuming clothes at a destructive and unsustainable rate. To break this cycle, we need to extend the lifetime of our clothes. Loved clothes last longer. They are replaced less often, reducing the need for resources and manufacturing of replacement garments. And design plays a role too. There are many life-extending features out there. Think breathable fabrics, which require less laundering, adjustable sizing and a design so at the end of life can be easily repaired, reused or recycled, meaning the raw materials can be used again and again. In this film, we explore the problems of our current clothing systems and the solutions being developed to transition to more circular practices, including extended producer responsibility, EPR schemes. EPR is a political lever to combating waste. Under EPR, producers such as brands will have physical and or financial responsibility for the management and disposal of their products at end of useful life. EPR uh, is short for Extended Producer Responsibility. It means that the producer will be responsible for their products, not only producing them and selling them, but also afterwards. Uh, especially as waste. Uh, I think it should also be the produ products in use, uh, because also in use products make a lot of waste, like microplastic for instance. It is important to take the facts about how, how garments actually are used into account. But it's also another question, and that is for the whole industry to think more about what they actually are doing and how the products are going to be used uh, and how the products also are possible to reuse uh, many times, give them many good lives uh, before uh, eventually uh, recycling in the end. Uh, the people that produce clothes that will stay with us more or less forever shouldn't pay. And that's why the system of EPR have to be taking uh, the use phase of clothes seriously. And that can be done uh, by looking at the waste stream itself. EPR is a very important topic for the future of the fashion. And so uh, I think that we need to have the right approach to these, uh, to these uh, new laws. In Prato, uh, we can maybe uh, teach something about the APR and the eco design because for many years uh, our companies were specialized to disassembling the, the, the clothes. Okay, so EPR schemes clearly have great future potential. But what about fashion? How can we design, produce, use, reuse, and recycle ourselves to a more circular future? Surely establishing this system is a long way off, right? Maybe not. Wool, like other renewable fibres, is part of the natural world, and the nutrients in the fibre can be returned to nature if designed, recycled, and ultimately disposed of correctly. Uh, the impact of fast fashion is huge. Our biggest problem is the overproduction and the fast fashion system itself, producing more than we as you know as all of us together actually can use uh, and uh, so we need regulation that can attack uh, the system and that can make uh, it more difficult to produce a lot and to produce the clothes that are used the least in large volumes the high speed fast fashion business model sees clothes made quickly at low prices to consumers. It is worn quickly, often thrown away quickly, but the impact is long lasting. Humanity needs to get a handle on the runaway waste train before it's too late. Policy needs to step in and regulate. From what I glean, there are many hundreds of tons of waste that um, could be reused, that doesn't get reused, that goes to landfill, or even goes into a lower value um, application that it, that it could go into. It's 
kind of a complicated thing. Open loop, um, maybe I can explain you better with uh, some example. Uh, when you take a bottle uh, from uh, uh, the food industry and you make a new yarn to make uh, a new clothes, this is called open loops because uh, you pass from uh, a product to another. The closed loop is when uh, from a fabric you do a new fabric or from a garment you do a new garment in, the, in, in a closed loop into the fashion industry. Uh, this is the, the big difference and is important to respect the closed loop because uh, the brands, the companies, uh, has this, the responsibility uh, to, um, to know where their garments are going. Fiber to fiber is important because we don't lose the purpose of the material for which they were taken for. All textiles need some chemicals in order to convert them from the fiber to the end product. And so these chemicals will show up in a recycled product. They will show up as residuals, sometimes referred to as legacy chemicals. Now, the more fibers are recycled, then the more that we will have to deal with these legacy chemicals. Some of the chemicals are really difficult to remove. Uh, some are actually designed to be uh, left on the fibre, for example, for washability or for stain repellency. And consequently, these fibres are going to show up in any of the residual tests that are carried out uh, for labels such as Ecotex 100, Blue Sign, and even the EU's own Eco label. There are, of course, exemptions, but only for 100% recycled products. The legacy chemical issue presents a challenge to all fibres, uh, not just wool, mainly through the additional testing costs that are required in order to confirm the providence of the actual source of the uh, fibre to be recycled. So there are some challenges, but what are the opportunities? And what can brands do to design for an EPR mandated world? The cycle wool has a 200 years old model that was built and it will be important uh, uh, the EPR because uh, uh, the wool system is already uh, ready for, uh, for this uh, happening. Uh, fortunately wool has a good value uh, on, the, on the post consumer so uh, the, 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 the wool uh, is the material uh, which is uh, uh, the best, uh, has the best recyclability. All our uh, um, collection of fabrics are done and designed to be recyclable, and this is very important. And with the process, uh, we are zero waste, we have a zero waste production. I, I think extended producer responsibility has a great potential to transform our sector, as well as other sort of uh, business models like um, you know, designing for recycling, designing for durability, uh, other policies like uh, having minimum recycle content in, in new products. All of these things collectively have a real potential to work together. Interestingly, if, if you want to use it for fillings, like for bedding and, and for furniture and whatever, it has to have a minimum wool content of 30% because wool is fire resistant or, or has fire resistant properties. So, you know, in order to be able to supply into those kind of sectors, uh, the, the manufacturers are looking for a minimum 30% wool content. So that, that's a, something that's positive for the wool industry. But also what's really good for wool is that it is the most readily recyclable um, fibre that's out there on the market. The textile producers need to be aware of how difficult some of the fabrics that, or yarns that they're making are difficult to reprocess. So for example, wool is, is quite easy, it's, it's quite soft, it's easily, easily pulled up. Whereas polycottons and viscose and lycra and all these type of things are difficult and they don't have any fire retardant properties whatsoever. And so they have low value. And what I would say to any textile designer, uh, fabric designer, is put a wool content in it if you can. Um, because that does give it a value 
and it helps people like us find a home. OK, so design clearly plays a key role in accelerating the transition to circular models. How can decisions at production conception determine the finished product's full life cycle impact? You need to design for products that are compatible with human health and with nature. Design, of course, it comes down to a lot about material choice, manufacturing choices, but also how you then blend the materials. So I need to design for, first of all, for a long lifetime, but between the, two, the choice of the fiber uh, and that uh, recycled material is a whole, whole process and a long journey to get to. So the, the um, design is, um, the designers have both a huge responsibility and huge opportunities to, uh, to do good. How can we make things so that you actually fall in love with it and to keep it for uh, many, many years and you pass it on to a good friend or to your kids or something or you just put it in your wardrobe because it's, you just can't get rid of it because it's so nice and you loved it so much and you have a story with it. These kind of things, uh, these relationships that people actually have with clothing uh, are so valuable and they are so necessary because then we can um, keep things for a longer time and it's not about keeping things for a long time in your wardrobe and not using it. It's, it's actually the things you love that you actually take out and wear as often as you can because you just love it. So in terms of the design of the textile product, one of the most fundamental things is what fibre is it made from? And is it made entirely from that fibre? Is it 100% fibre A? Or is it a blend of fibres A and B? Or even more complex mixtures? Um, so that's a very important consideration and it has a direct bearing on how easily that product could be recycled ultimately. It's difficult to be certain about how EPR and any fees or taxes associated with EPR will affect market dynamics, but clearly if products are designed and can be demonstrated to be more durable, uh, more long-lasting, designed to be reused and recycled. Their life is designed to be extended uh, and, and you can demonstrate that they've met very stringent specifications and performance requirements to evidence that. Then you, you'd expect those products to be more competitive um, when it comes to the application of fees. Well I think where we need to get to is, is developing new markets. Uh, at the moment, we, as I say, we are dominated by reuse, which is really, really good for the environment, but um, reuse doesn't address the ultimate issue, is what to, ha what to do with the products at the end of their, their useful life. So um, we, what we really need to do is, is, is tackle the, what I call the Achilles heel of, of our sector and develop new recycling markets. If we can develop new mechanical and chemical recycling markets, um, that will help improve the efficiencies and the economics of the sector and, and deliver a circular economy for fashion and textiles. And so extended producer responsibility can help in that way. The elephant in the room is that we are buying too much stuff. Uh, that, that is just a fact and we need to slow down our consumption of all fashionable items, all fashionable textiles. We need, to buy, we need to buy better quality, we need to buy more durable um, and we need to um, you know, pay more for it as well, let's be honest with you. Um, and how do you sort of overcome that when people want to be fashionable and they want to change? Uh, so uh, we can hope, uh, we can hope that EPR will favour clothes that are used long and that have a high value in our society, uh, like a lot of old clothes. I think it will be use, useful for all producers to think about what happens to their garments at the end of life and the incredibly, the incredibly ingenious ways in which other manufacturers and other suppliers attempt to keep those garments in circulation for as long as possible and also how consumers can keep those garments in circulation for as long as possible and how the design of those products affects what happens 
um, and whether or not reuse or recycling is even possible. While the regulatory measures in this space continue to evolve, a key solution is to keep clothing in use and out of waste streams. This is about creating clothing that is loved and lasts. It's about material selection, good design, responsible business models, longer garment lifespan, and what happens at the end of life. It's about making good choices, which will have a positive impact on the future of fashion and the planet.